Um, this is a piece I wrote uh, for Salman. It's called Salman the Wordsmith. When atrocities of this kind occur, we hear an explosion of the language of rights, the right to free speech, to religion, to revenge. The zealous defenders of these rights often conceive of their rights as being in direct opposition to the rights of others. Sometimes these rights seem to exist solely in a state of contention. In these arguments about who has the right to do what, the barricades were built long ago. They remain in their habitual positions. Meanwhile, the rhetorical grenades fly back and forth along preordained routes. Within a day or two, it becomes easy to forget that beneath these over-familiar and calcified debates there lies a human being, in this case, Salman Rushdie, a real man with a real human body, presently catastrophically wounded and in pain. Another possibility is to employ the language of duties. There are duties we have towards each other and to ourselves. My own duty to Salman is a duty of kinship because he is one of my people, that is, a writer. In our peculiar guild which stretches the globe, our collective duty is to language. We are wordsmiths. We consider ourselves custodians of words. They don't belong to us alone, of course, but we try to take special care of them, renewing and refreshing them, like so many farmers tilling our separate stretches of land. We think of ourselves as having a duty of care towards language itself. A self-appointed duty, no doubt, but still a duty. It is our duty as writers to commit acts of language. We do this in all sorts of ways, particular to each one of us, but always with the awareness that our acts of language do not cancel each other out. They cannot eradicate nor kill each other. Rather, they lay next to each other in simultaneous existence like so many tilled fields, even if the things we choose to grow upon them are as different from each other as can be imagined. Language is a simultaneous situation. You speak, I speak. You write, I write. Both sentences can be heard. Both can be read. Sometimes the result is joy and enlightenment, sometimes friction and fury. Some sentences are louder than others, some more brutal, some barely whispers. But never does one sentence entirely snuff out the other, unless it is a legal, militaristic, or state-sponsored sentence, unless it is a death sentence. Fictional sentences have no such power to command. Fictional acts of language are the very opposite of an eye for an eye. They offer alternative ways of seeing not ultimatums. Whereas if you take a man's eye, it is gone, irrevocably and forever. It's a duty of writers to work their particular patch of land in their own way, and the literary landscape created by Salman is one of the great greenest and most fertile on this planet. He has always been a stern defender of his right to tend his corner as he sees fit, but even stronger than his arguments, to my mind, is his example. Many people in his position would have hastily planted a new, less provocative crop of words or cultivated a forest of retraction. But as a stalwart, wal but as a stalwart member of this guild of writers, he felt his duty so acutely that he chose to stand in the middle of an open field for all to see, well aware he risked his life by doing so. When writers are about their work, when we are cultivating acts of language on the page or in public, we rely on a broader duty of care, one upon which all unarmed workers depend. Writers are no more soldiers than postmen or teachers, and we have, like them, an expectation of physical safety which can only occur when many different kinds of citizens feel a duty of care towards each other. The people who rush from the audience to the stage to protect Salman from a young man intent on violence those brave citizens enacted their duty of care. Whoever condemns both individual and state-sponsored acts of violence expresses their duty of care. Whoever hides behind a rusty old barricade to make the argument that words are as lethal as guns and knives and fists has forgotten it, 
or perhaps never knew it.